Hello, my name's Linda Martin and today I'm going to have a look at some different methods of making tiny trees to go inside your eggs. This is my summer roses design, which has got four little doors, nicely shaped doors. And inside, you can see I've made a little tiny crystal gem side tree with crystal drops hanging from the branches. So this is the one that we're going to start with, but we can also do one which looks like a cherry blossom and I'll show you how to do that one as well. So let's get all the materials together. We start off with beading wire. I'm going to be using a 0.45mm brass wire for this and we'll also need a little base to put the tree onto. So again, a little plaster disc. An assortment of crystal drops so you can decide whichever colour you want to do on your tree to match the outside of the egg. And then I'm going to be using some sniglets and I have some pink ones for the cherry blossom and also some green ones, a green mixture for the base of the egg, or the tree rather. So that's those. Um, we might actually incorporate something with some little beads as well. So I've just grabbed some tiny seed beads to see if we can do something with those later on. In terms of equipment, very, very limited, a pair of pliers, and that's more or less it. So we start off, we try to decide how long we want the wire. And to do this, we work out the height of the tree, and then we allow some extra on the end so that we can actually twist it and accommodate that and have a little bit of a root structure as well on the end of the wire. So we cut eight of these to start with. So the first thing we do is we take our crystal drop and we feed the wire through the hole. There it is. Okay. And we take that down into the loop and then just give it, just pinch it together slightly and give the wire a tiny twist. Now don't twist too tightly to the crystal drop because if you do, there's a chance that you break one of the crystals like I did earlier. You just snap off the point and that doesn't exactly help at all. So then what we're going to do is we're going to twist just a little way down. So to help me with that, I'm going to hold the tip of the wire near the crystal end with the pliers and then if you've got a second pair of pliers that's also quite useful because then you can just grab and twist and what we're going to do is just twist for a short length maybe a centimetre just to get that little bit of a branch going. Let's just give that a little bit more of a twist at that end. So there we have the start of the tree. Now we always work from the tips of the branches outwards. Um, I'm just going to try and get that a little bit tighter at that end being very careful not to do any damage to the crystal. But I think that will do it. So a nice tight twist and then of course you have your loose ends. So what we're going to do is prepare eight of these. So let's very quickly second one it's actually easier I think if you hold the wire in your left hand if you're right-handed hold the wire in your left hand and then just twist when you start doing something like this you remember part way through just oh yes it's easier doing it that way so there we have our second one and let's quickly make do the others. I use eight because it's for this size tree 
you don't want too many branches but if you're doing something for a bigger egg perhaps you know an ostrich or a rear you might decide that you want to do a few more so just whatever quantity of branches you feel you want just make those up there we are There's the hole again. Take that down into the loop. Give it a little pinch and a slight twist just to get you started. And then we can do a nice tight twist. So now that I've prepared all eight of my lengths of wire, I'm going to bunch them in groups of two. And I'm going to just lay one over the top of the other at the point where the twist ends. And just very carefully just twist those four lengths of wire together. Again, not taking them too far down on the twist because we've still got some more branches to accommodate. So there's the start of your branch. Quickly do that with all of them. I'll take a second or two and give that another little twist. Try to keep your twisting fairly tight. Um, it does look a bit neater if you can do that. Just watch what we're doing. There we are. And the last pair. There we are. So now we have the four pairs and we can start now with the next twist. So we take two of these and do exactly as you did before, placing overlapping one over the other and then giving them a good twist. And as you can see I've abandoned the pliers for the time being but let's just see if we can just working the pliers down a tiny bit. So now we have that kind of length. Okay, so let's do that with the other pairs. The neck really is to hang on tightly to everything. All right, so that's two lots of branches. Let's just overlap the final for the final stage. And this is going to be the trunk of the tree. Now I'm going to leave myself some little ends at this end because what I want to do now is just split that apart a little bit. I'm going to use the pliers for this because this is a bit more fiddly. And I'm just going to take three or four of the little wires and just twist them outwards. This is going to be kind of like a root structure. Let's move those out of the way. Those bits are quite short there. Let's just grab that twist. There we are. And then split again. Now 
just split them into the roots um, however many wires you want to use there's, there's no hard and fast rules about this it's just a case of what you fancy doing and this of course is the area that's going to be attached to your base so I need to just straighten that out a wee bit and then I'm going to just snip that off with some wire cutters so let's just oops, let's give that one a little bit more of a twist it seems to have undone itself that's better okay so I'm just going to snip try to hang on to the little bits and pieces, we don't want those getting into anything there we are and then the final final root structure oh there we go okay so now you have your little tree and you can bend the branches little the loop on the end will allow the crystal drops to hang downwards you probably hear my dogs barking in the background sounds like they've just come in from their long walk well, we have two Brittany Spaniels that go out looking like Brittany Spaniels and come back looking like chocolate Labradors covered in mud. Okay, so there we have our little tree. Just flatten that down against the base. Now normally I would use epoxy glue to attach this, but for speed I'm just going to um, pop some of the thick tacky glue onto the base so that I can show you the next stage. Okay, so I'm going to just tip some of the sniglets into my little container. There we are. And then I'm going to put a good dollop of the tacky glue. This is about the only thing that will really stick sniglets to a surface. Um, See, I'm not exactly being sparing with the glue because I want to make sure that I've got plenty there to embed everything into. I'll leave the edges for now because it's going to be a bit tricky holding on to those. So what I'll do is we'll pop that onto our tree on there. I think we need a bit more in the centre actually. So let's get another dollop. That's a good technical term. There we go. That's it. And then we can pop the tree in position. And then I'm going to just sprinkle, whoops, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to dunk that into there. And then I'm going to work the tree into the glue. just hold it there. It's going to take some time to set but at least you get the idea as to how to do that. So that's our little crystal tree and as I said before you can bend and contort the the branches in whichever way you want. So some of these have gone a little bit wonky, that's better. Try to sort of adjust the height a little bit of the tree so that you give it a little bit of variation. There we are. So we'll pop that to dry. We'll just leave that there for now. And we'll move on to the next technique. So I shall get some wires twisted together so that we have the basic tree done. Oh dear, I've had a bit of a, a collapse. That's better. Right, so I'll get the next tree ready. So now we're ready for the next tree and hopefully it'll stay upright, unlike the crystal one, which really did need some epoxy glue on that base, but never mind, I can do that another time. 
Now I've been preparing some other wires and to do this one, which is going to be the cherry blossom tree, I've gone, I've taken my length of wire and I'm just going to pop the pliers into the end and I'm literally going to twist so there's nothing threaded onto this at all. This is literally just twisting the wire to about the same length as the previous ones, like so. Let's do that with the second one. This is so simple to do. You don't really need any strength in your fingers either, especially if you've got a pair of pliers to hang on to. That does help. And then again, we take the pairs, overlap, twist those together a wee bit and then just twist them down a touch. Okay, so we'll then take the other ones that I've already prepared. We're going to assemble this in exactly the same way. Let's take these two. Like so. Then we'll have the next pair, give that a good twist and form the trunk like so. Let's just twist some of the roots together. I've done a good job of twisting there, they don't want to come apart. There, that's better. end Split these into two. There we are. One more lot to go. And then we can trim the ends back again. So again, just being careful not to let those fly everywhere. When you've got dogs, you're always aware of things getting stuck in paws. And we really don't want that to happen. That's come untwisted again. So let's give that another little twist. There's always one. These will be virtually hidden anyway when you pop them onto the little base. So let's just rearrange the branches a wee bit. Cherry trees tend to have the branches looping upwards and then coming down a little bit, don't they? So let's just do that, give it more of an oriental feel as well. And then we can start to apply the cherry blossom. A little, that's better, give it a nicer shape. Okay, so there we have our little tree. So let's take the sniglets. 
Now be careful when you're doing this because you don't want to put too much glue on, otherwise it'll trail downwards, it'll hang down like wisteria. But we're going to just put a little blob on the end and dunk that into the sniglets. Just gently press that into shape. And then we'll pop some more just here and there. Make sure that the little rings coated each side. If it doesn't dunk in very easily, just use your fingers to sprinkle it on. Okay. And then move on to another branch. So a little bit on there. There we are. There's rather a lot on there. That's that's better. Another little sprinkle of sniglets. What I like to do as well, when I've put this onto the base with the green sniglets on to look like grass, every now and again I'll just add a tiny, tiny little bit of the pink so it looks like the blossoms have fallen onto the ground. This is the pink mixture of sniglets that we do. Just gives it a little bit more variety if you've got that change in colour now and again. There we are. And there's our cherry blossom tree. Sakura, as the Japanese say. Very simple to do. So the next technique I'm going to show you is one which uses the seed beads. I have a string here. I'm just going to, I've cut my wires in exactly the same way as I did before. I'm just going to thread five of the little beads onto the loop of the wire. There we are. I'll just take those down to the end and give them a twist. Make sure that all of the little beads are contained within the loop. There's my pliers. And whoops, there they go sliding again. And then give them a twist. That's better. And what you can also do with these is loop the wire, thread on some more and do that all the way along on each side, on each of the two wires, so that you get little tiny branches coming off in each direction. Um, I'll just show you quickly that method on this one. So we've, we'll take a little loop here and let's find the end of my beads. Show you very quickly. So that's five little beads just going on to the end there. Now I'm going to then loop that if you can see properly what I'm doing here. Oops. Now obviously if you're going to do this method you're going to need a much longer wire. This will just show you what you 
can do and then twist the two together a little tiny bit so that you can always go back in and twist again and then you could go down twist a little bit further down and then take this wire thread on another five beads using this wire has made my fingers quite dirty one, two, three, four five come on that last one doesn't want to that's it there we are so we'll just pinch those together. Oop. There we are. So this was the the first one that we did, and then We've just looped out the wire so that we get little tiny branches coming off that centre one. So you can carry on and do that. But when you put them all together, then I've already done one little bunch. So I use this one. Just make a little bit of variation. And overlap again. resort to that oh let's hold in that hand and give that a really good twist with the pliers because you can use all manner of things to actually create the foliage or the flowers on these little tiny trees um, I've done some with little cold porcelain blossoms on them let's just I won't bother splaying out the roots yes I will Let's do it properly if we're going to do it. So as I said before, you can use little cold porcelain blossoms. Um, you could even do sort of little snow tr trimmed trees with the no fire snow or even um, something like white bath sealant. It's just really a case of your imagination. Um, you can get tiny, tiny little leaves which you could attach to the tree. You don't have to thread everything on. You could just make a bare tree as I did with the cherry tree and then embellish that. Um, be interesting to see what people can come up with in terms of variety. Sometimes it does get a bit hard on the fingers when you're doing a lot of this. And two wires never seem to twist too well together, so it's always better to use groups of three if possible. And again just snip those off.
then we can mess about with the shape of the tree. You can see it's, it's quite pretty when you have the extensions coming out from the main branch as well. Just gives it that little bit more interest. Changes the shape quite a bit as well. So there we are. That's another little tree to add to our forest, even if that one does want to fall over all the time. So I hope this is something that you'll feel you can have a go at yourselves and uh, it will be interesting to see what you actually create. There we are, so there's our three little trees. Okay well thanks for watching, hope you've enjoyed it and oh there's a few little blossoms there just to show you. Let's just pop that against that one just to give you an idea of what it could look like with the little cold porcelain blossoms. Okay, thanks and hopefully we'll see you again soon.